Hello, I am Luis Serrano and this is Serrano Academy and in this video I will tell you about KL divergence and cross entropy. In statistics, machine learning and similar fields, you're going to be working with a lot of probability distributions. And many times you're going to want to know how different two distributions are from each other. A very useful and popular way of doing this is using the callback Leibler divergence or KL divergence for short. KL divergence has this formula, which is related to the formula for cross entropy. However, I'm not a big fan of sums of logarithms. I like to see everything as a probability. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a game and calculating the probability of this game is gonna get us really close to calculating the cross entropy and the KL divergence. Are you ready? Let's begin. So let's start by considering a five-sided die with sides labeled A, B, C, D and E. And I know it's hard to make a five-sided die in real life, but let's just pretend we have one. Now I'm going to toss this die 10 times and I get the following. First, I get that it lands on A, then A again, A, A, then B, B, C, D, E, and then E. So those were my results. And here's the histogram of results, four times A, two times B, one times C, one times D, and two times E. Now this doesn't look like a fair die, it looks like a biased one. And from here, we can guess that maybe the probabilities are 40% for A, 20% for B, 10% for C, and for D, and then 20% for E. And now let's say that these are the actual probabilities, that we toss the die thousands of times and we realize that it's biased in this way. These are the probabilities for it to land in any one of the phases. And of course, we can continue tossing it and we get different results. But if we toss it many times, we're going to get 40% it lands on A, 20% on B and on E, and then 10% on C and on D. Now the question is the following. Let's say that I want to toss this die and replicate the sequence. So I want to get A, 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 B, B, C, D, and E, E. That is not easy. Even though the die has those probabilities, it's still hard to get that one. But let's say we win a lot of money if we're able to replicate this sequence. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If we want to replicate the sequence, which of the following dies is a better choice? So the first one is the original die, the one that has these probabilities. Then we have another die that is kind of similar, but it has these other probabilities. And then finally, we have a third die, which has these probabilities for A, B, C, D, and E. Now, which one would you pick? Well, if you said the first one, you are right. And which one is the second one that you would pick? And if you said the second one, you're right. And it seems like the third die is the worst one. And why is this the case? Well, your intuition may have told you that if the distribution for the results that we want to get, it's on the top left, is 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.2, well, which one of the bottom ones is the most similar to that one? Well, the first one is exactly the same, so that should give us the best probability for getting that sequence on top. The second one is pretty similar, so it should give us a decent probability and the third one is very dissimilar. In fact, it's gonna land on C a lot more, so it's very unlikely it's gonna give us the original sequence. It could, but it's very likely that it won't. But it seems like we're thinking a lot about probabilities. What is the probability of getting this sequence? That's what we're gonna calculate today. And these probabilities are very small. However, the first one is gonna give us the highest possible probability. The second one is gonna give us a slightly lower probability and the third one is gonna give us a much, much lower probability of obtaining the sequence above. So let's start by calculating the probability of obtaining this sequence on top using die one. Remember that die one has these probabilities for landing in A, B, C, D, and E. So first, let's study the probability of each independent toss. So for the first four A's, the probability of each one of them is 0.4. Then for the next two B's is 0.24 each. For the C is 0.1, for the D is 0.1, and for the last two E's is 0.2 each. Now notice that each toss is completely independent from the other ones because we picked up the die and tossed it again. And so therefore the probability that all the tosses land on these letters is the product of all of them. Because when we have independent events, the probability that all of them happen is the product of all the independent probabilities. This is a tiny number, it's 0 0.00000004096. 000 However, it's the best we can do. If I pick any other die, the probability is gonna be even smaller. Now the procedure I'm gonna do is related to something called entropy. If you wanna know more about it, there's a video here in my channel called Shannon Entropy and Information Game. But basically the main thing of entropy is the following. I don't like numbers that are so small. 
and I don't like products of a lot of numbers. In particular, imagine if you have the product of thousands of tiny numbers. This is first of all tiny and second of all very volatile because if I change one number, the product can change a lot. Instead of products, I like sums. And how do you turn products into sums? Well, with a very nice function, the logarithm. So in machine learning, most of the time that you see a logarithm is because somebody was dealing with a huge product and wanted to turn it into a sum. So the logarithm here is minus 14.71. Now I'm taking the natural logarithm, the logarithm based E. Many times the logarithm base two is taken or the logarithm base 10. At the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference because if you change logarithm base E by logarithm base two or by base 10, all you have to do is multiply everything by a constant. So when you do logarithms, as long as you're consistent and always use the right base, most of the time, it doesn't really matter what base we use. But if you do this and start getting different numbers, it may be because you're taking a different base. Now the logarithm turns products into sums. So now we have Instead of logarithm of this product, we have logarithm of 0.4 plus logarithm of 0.4 plus all the way to logarithm of 0.2. It's a sum of 10 things. So we can write it as four logarithm of 0.4 plus two logarithm of 0.2 plus one logarithm of 0.1 plus one logarithm of 0.1 plus two logarithm of 0.2. And let's take the average of those. So let's divide it by 10 because there's 10 numbers. And because we divide by 10, then we have minus 1.471. Notice that these logarithms are always gonna be negative. Why are they negative? because it's the logarithm of something that's between zero and one. And the logarithm of numbers between zero and one is always gonna be negative. The logarithm of one is zero, and then the logarithm for numbers that are bigger than one is positive. So we're always gonna end up dealing with negative numbers. But we can clean this up a bit by multiplying both sides by negative one. And so we have that 1.471 is the negative of this average. Let's write it again over here. We have negative 0.4 log of 0.4 minus 0.2 log of 0.2 minus 0.1 log of 0.1 minus 0.1 log of 0.1 minus 0.2 log of 0.2. Why did I write it like this? Because here we have two distributions. It looks like one of them, but in reality there's two. There's a distribution that we're gonna call P, which is the one coming from the sequence. And there's a distribution that we're also gonna call P, which is the one coming from the die. In this case, they're the same, but they're not always gonna be the same. And when we add them all and we get the negative sum of PI log of PI, we get 1.471. This is called the cross entropy and it's denoted as H of P and P, where P is the first distribution, the one corresponding to the sequence we wanna get. And then the second P is the second distribution, the one corresponding to the die that we're tossing. Now in here, because the two distributions are the same, it's actually called the entropy and it's denoted as H of P. So when you have a distribution, the entropy is this number. And in general, the more spread out the distribution is, the higher the entropy. If you have a distribution where you only have a few values that your variable can hit, then the entropy is small. But if you have many variables and it looks more homogeneous, then the entropy is higher. Now let's do the exact same thing for die number two. This one has these probabilities over here. So they're almost the same as in the first one, but they change a little bit. And we do the same game. So the first four have probability 0 0.4, then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.2 and 0.1. So the numbers change a little bit. To find the probability of all these tosses, so the probability of obtaining the sequence with die number two, we get the product, and that's actually a small number. It's 0 0.00000001024. So it's smaller than the previous one. And when we do the logarithms and take the average, now we're gonna get the negative of that is 1.609. So it's a bigger number because we negated the number. So we actually get a smaller number when we take the logarithm, but we take the negative, so we get a bigger number. And when we write it like this, then notice that we still have our two distributions. This is the distribution P that comes from the sequence, which is the exact same one as before, is 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And the second distribution is the one coming from die number two. So that's 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.1. So this time they're different. And now our summation is negative summation of PI logarithm of QI, which is 1.609. So now it's not the entropy, now it's called cross entropy, and we are applying it to P and Q. Now let's do the exact same thing for die three. This one should give us a much smaller probability because the distribution here is very different from the one of the sequence, but let's see. So we have 0.1 for the four A's, 0.2 for the B's, 0.4 for the C, 0.2 for the D, and then 0.1 for the E. The probability here is super tiny, check it out. There's a lot of zeros and then a three and a two. When we take the logarithm and then the average and then negate it, we get 1.956 and that comes from here. 
on the left we have p which comes from the sequence and on the right we have r that comes from the die and therefore our cross entropy is going to be this formula over here which is going to be 1.956 so let's do a small summary here we have our sequence and the distribution for the values in our sequence and then we have die one two and three for each of the die we calculate the probability that if we throw it 10 times we'll get the sequence these numbers are very small here they are and as you can see the biggest one is for die one which has the exact same distribution as the sequence the one that's slightly similar is the next one and the one that's vastly different is the last one and actually die one will always win the highest probability we can obtain of obtaining that sequence is using a die that has the exact same distribution as the sequence then we get the cross entropy which is the logarithm of this probability times a negative one and scaled so for the first one since the distribution is the same it's called the entropy and it's 1.471 for the second case we get 1.609 and for the third case we get 1.956 actually the smallest we can get is the entropy and if we have any other distribution the cross entropy is larger than the entropy as you can see and now to get the KL divergence we just subtract the cross entropy minus the entropy so here we get zero because it's the same thing on here we get 0 0.138 which is slightly bigger than zero and here we get 0 0.485, which is a lot bigger than zero. If we wanna look at which one has the least entropy, it's this one over here. As you can see, the smallest scale divergence is between the distribution and itself. And as the distribution gets more and more different, then the KL divergence grows and grows. And it's always positive. So the smallest KL divergence you can ever obtain is zero, which is when you put the same distribution in both sides. And as you change the distribution, the KL divergence will grow. So it's a measure of how similar two distributions are. Notice one thing that's important that is that it's not a distance, so it's not symmetric because D of PQ is not the same as D of QP. But it's still a good measure to tell how different two distributions are. And a summary of formulas. So here's a small summary of formulas. We have the distribution for the sequence, which is called P, and the distribution for the probabilities of the die, which we're gonna call Q. And the probability of tossing the die and obtaining the sequence is going to be the product of qi to the pi, actually times n. And when we take the cross entropy, then we're taking the logarithm of this probability times minus one over n. The minus is to make it positive and the one over n is to scale it. And the formula is this over here. It's the negative sum of pi log of qi. And finally, the KL divergence is just the change in cross entropy. So it's the cross entropy of pq minus the entropy of p now we did this in the discrete case but we can also do it in the continuous case so if we have two continuous distributions p and q and we want to see how different they are we can still calculate the cross entropy and the kl divergence so the cross entropy is very similar to the one with discrete distributions except instead of a summation we have an integral here i took the integral over the reals but you can take the integral over any domain where these distributions live and the kl divergence is the same thing is the difference between the cross entropy and the entropy so that's all folks thank you very much for your attention if you like this video please subscribe hit like and throw in a comment i really like reading your comments you can also tweet at me at serrano academy or check out my page serrano.academy where there's a lot of blog posts and videos and code and a lot of stuff and if you want to go deeper you can take a look at my book grokking machine learning in the link in the comments there is the link and a discount code for 40 percent so thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video